Uh, hey, Coach, uh, I, I know uh, the news just dropped that uh, publicly that Israel is opting out. Have any of their players come to you and said, uh, besides Israel and JC, and said that they're going to opt out and uh, not play out the rest of the season? We've had uh, four, four, four individuals, Israel, JC, RJ, Roderick, and Micaiah Scott, uh, on top of the three that opted out earlier in the season. So seven total. And uh, uh, Scott would be a transfer and Roderick professional, or they just said they're opting out for the rest? They said they're opting out for, uh, you know, they t COVID reasons and personal reasons. Didn't right. get into it. You know, they have the NCAAs granted people the option to opt out. Uh, and so there's really nothing you can do about it. Go to David. Hey, Mike, thanks for doing this. Um, when you met with the team this morning, just what did you talk to them about? What was the tone of that meeting? What was their attitude uh, going on to the practice? Uh, we talked about uh, it being about us. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, it's not an individual sport, it's a team sport. And the people that are in this room today uh, showed up and are ready to go to work. And we're going to put our best foot forward and put our best uh, effort on the field on Saturday. And the only way that's going to happen is not – through words, but through action uh, and having a good practice today, one tomorrow, uh, you know, and those are our two work days, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that was the main message. Hilma Granahan. Hey, Coach, since yesterday when, when you're lamenting about how, how you hadn't had a chance to get into Missouri's game plan, what do you feel like you've been able to accomplish as far as getting ready for, for the game on Saturday? Well, uh, you know, I think, you know, Missouri, first of all, uh, just looking at their defense, I'll speak to that uh, uh, side of the ball first. Uh, they're going to commit to stopping the run, um, you know, and that's obviously been our strong suit this year is the run game. Uh, but it really doesn't matter who they play. They pack the box. Uh, they base have an odd defense, and they'll reduce it down to what you call a bear defense, or some of you might know as 46 defense, what – you know, the old Bears used to play today, and they're going to play man-to-man -man coverage outside. Uh, they do a lot of movement inside, uh, some some line games, very similar to, to Texas A&M, which gave us some problems uh, up front uh, in blocking some of that movement, uh, present a really, really difficult challenge. Uh, linebacker uh, Bolton, uh, I believe his name, number 32, is one of the best linebackers that we faced all year, one of the best linebackers I've seen in a long time. Uh, he's very active. He can run. He will strike you. Uh, they do a good job of protecting him and keeping linemen off of him. Um, you know, in the back end, they play they play man to man. Uh, Rakestraw, uh, the young quarter, uh, number two, uh, very good player. He's committed to me at Colorado State uh, for for a while. Uh, he's got length. He's got range. The other corner, number eight, uh, also has length. Is very very. Very, very handsy, uh, does a good job. The nose guard, Kobe Whiteside, is not the biggest guy, but he's extremely strong uh, and can push the pocket. Uh, it's a little bit of a matchup problem uh, for, our, uh, for our center. Uh, offensively, uh, they, he does a great job. Eli does a great job of, of, of spreading you out, but also giving you some two-back run game principles, uh, major heavily in the stretch game. Uh, I like to get on the edge of your defense uh, and stretch you out and then, you know, run enough counter, uh, not your traditional counter where they pull the, you know, the guard and the, the tight end, which you see nowadays. It's the old school counter, which is probably more traditional, the guard tackle counter. Do a really good job of that. They have enough, you know, quarterback run to keep you honest. And they got, you know, I know they've had, you know, they've had issues on both sides of the ball with COVID, but they've had skill step up and make plays. Number nine is one of the fastest guys I've seen on tape. Uh, you know, and the quarterback's an accurate player. So it's a, it's a big challenge for us. You know, they haven't played, I'm trying to, you know, since the Florida game. Uh, so they've been off for a couple of weeks. They've got some guys back from what I'm, from what I'm reading. Uh, so I'm sure they're rested uh, and, and healthy. So it's going to be a big challenge for us, and we're going to have to play very well uh, in this game. Josh Kendall. Josh Kendall. Mike, you mentioned yesterday that it had been a long year for these kids. Do you think that was part of the reason you've had four guys leave um, under these circumstances this week? Well, I, I think that obviously uh, could attribute to it. 
you know, I, I can't speak personally for each one of those guys because you don't you only know uh, you don't know exactly what's going on with 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 each individual. Now, you know, there was you know communication with all these guys. Uh, I mean, it's 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 been a long year. It's a different year, uh, and you know when you know it's told to to young kids that you know, hey, you don't you don't have to play this year. You can opt out, and it doesn't count. Uh, you know, it, it gives it gives them a way out, uh, in my opinion. And uh, you know, it's like it's like anything, human nature. You know, I'll, I'll put it off till later. I'll start working, you know, harder later in the spring, or you know, I'll wait till next year. Uh, and you know, and that's you know, unfortunately, uh, I think that's this is this isn't the only place that, that that coaches are you know having issues with a long season and the, the ability to opt out. And I think that's why it's so important that you know. It is, you know, it is a team game. It is about us. It's not not about you individually. And everybody's got their own reasons of why they do it. And and uh, you know, there's there's no hard feelings to anybody. Uh, but the guys that are here, uh, it's got to be about us and not uh, the individual. Do you have any indication that you'll hear from more, or do you think this is it? I think this is I think this is it, but you know, you never know. Uh, you know we've had communication with all the guys. You know the last two day, two days. Uh, you know coaches individually uh, with their position groups. You know one on one. Uh, myself with a number of guys, and you know I feel like these guys want to play and play for each other. Uh, and now we got to have a good week of practice and get ready to play Saturday night. But you never know, to be honest. Traveris is from a from an immediate impact standpoint. Traveris has lost three de three starting defensive backs. Do you know what he plans to do to just to field a group back there? Yeah, we we have uh, we've moved to Andre White uh, to defensive back uh, to play a little safety uh, for us. Today was his first day, uh, you know, at that position. We have three games left. I talked to him yesterday, uh, myself and, and and Coach Robinson. You know about the move, uh, and you know he wants to be a running back, and he is a running back. Uh, but you know he get he's one of our best you know athletes. He does a great job since we've moved him to Gunner on special teams, uh, and very very energetic. Loves loves playing ball, and trying to get him on that side and get him active. Jordan, Jordan Rhodes, we've moved to defensive line uh, to help with the depth there. Uh, and a little bit of a size issue we have uh, up front. I mean, our guys are playing their tails off, uh, but they're planning to play a lot of snaps, and we're a little bit undersized up front. So trying to get some more, uh, some more beef up up front. Um, you know, and there's you know there's lots of different ways to skin a cat. Right now, we're trying to figure out that Coach T. Rob and his staff right now, of of what we can do. You know. Uh, you know, to be aggressive and stop the run because this because he is committed to the run. You know, but. Uh, you know, be good in the back end. And I think that's, you know, you got to mix things up. You know, anybody, if you play the same thing over and over, they're going to take advantage of you. So we're, we're getting a good plan of, of we want to be aggressive, but at the same time, you know, not give up the big play. You know, I mean, last week we, you know, gave up those big, huge explosives, which, you know, will kill anybody. You make a team go 14, you know, plays, you know, usually they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to self-destruct. And then, you know, Ole Miss was a little bit, and you know we let them off the hook in some cases when they had to go 14 plays. So, you know, we need to, we need to make the team go the long haul uh, and earn it. Thanks, Mike. Colin Taylor. Mike, two questions for you: Is is T. Rob still planning on calling the defense this week? Correct. Yes. Yes. And I guess how would you evaluate Colin Hill's um, performance this year, and what have you seen him? Do well and not do so well. Um, uh, for uh, first, first of all, I think you know, there, you know, every, you know, he plays a he plays a position that all eyes are on, uh, and we we all know the nature of the position. We talk about it in our room. I've talked about it in my room uh, okay. since I started coaching. You know, when things are going well, you're the, you're you're the best thing since sliced bread. And when they're not, no matter what's happening, it's your it's, it's the quarterback's fault. Uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, I think he has played well. There have been some times that, you know, we'd like to have a play back here or there, but that's, you know, that's any quarterback you watch, whether you're watching them on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, there's certain there's things sometimes that, that play, you know, you'd like to have plays over. Uh, bottom line is, you know, we need, we need to play better around our quarterback. That's the bottom line. Uh, we need to make some contested catches. We haven't made a contested catch all year besides Shai Smith's one catch against Auburn. Uh, we, don't, we haven't made those. 
Uh, and, you know, last week I thought he played, you know, he was very, very efficient, played his best game. Uh, he had one, you know, one pass that got away from him uh, on a fade route where we should have released outside, but we went inside. We got to see that and we got to paint, you know, paint the ball on him. And then we had a, you know, RPO run concept that we should have handed off. Uh, other than that, he, he put us in the right position. He was flawless. He was accurate. He did a, he did a nice job. Uh, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of things that, you know, we go over uh, offensively and I go over coaching that position that we can do better on a daily basis in, in a game. And we're always try, striving to get better. But uh, I think he's played well. I think we need to play better around, better around, around him. And I thought we did a little bit of that last week. Rick Henry. Hey, Coach, when we talked to you yesterday, you were already facing a big challenge, especially, well, making sure that the guys are focused after just the emotional day of saying goodbye to Coach Muschamp. And now before their teammates um, leaving, is that challenge even bigger for you? Because, in, you know, in addition to getting the team ready to play another football game, um, maybe you have to make sure their minds, their heads are in the right place, because I imagine after the past few days, their heads are just continuing to swirl a little bit. No question, uh, Rick. Uh, it's a challenge enough uh, when you got to take over uh, and you're not, the, you know, you're not the head coach and the interim coach and you step in. And then, you know, it's a challenge in, the, in this year with what we're dealing with, uh, with, you know, kids being able to opt out uh, at, any, at any moment. Uh, but uh, so that's why, you know, we usually do a team meeting, you know, because of COVID, we have to do it in the indoor. We usually do it after uh, meetings. I, we started the day with that this morning at, at, at 7 and 30 in the morning and basically address the things that you're talking about. You know, the guys that are here are here, you know, um, you know, no ill will to anybody that's not here, but the guys that are here are here. Uh, we're here for a reason. We have a great opportunity uh, in, in the face of adversity uh, to rise up. Uh, and that's, you know, and that's, that's what defines you is when you're able to, to, to rise up and handle adversity. Uh, and it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to create memories in this group and this family. Uh, and so those are some of the things that we talked about. And again, they can't be words. I, mean, I can say what I want to say. It's got to come from those guys that are still here on this team uh, to dig down and believe and play for each other and play for, you know, play for South Carolina. Mike Cuba. Mike, I know throughout training camp, what would tell us, um, you know, here and there that practices are pretty well. You know, there wasn't a day in terms of saying, hey, you know, pick things up. He felt pretty good throughout uh, training camp and throughout the season. How was practice today in terms of how the guys just handled things? And um, was there ever a moment you had to stop things and just say, you know, hey, guys, you know, we're all in this together or anything like that? No, I didn't. I didn't stop practice, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't good enough to beat Missouri. I'll tell you that. And I told them that. And, uh can't flip a switch on Saturday night and say you're ready to play. So we got to have better practice tomorrow. Kyle Thomas. Coach, obviously with everything going on, there's maybe a lot of pressures that you're feeling. How do you navigate and deal with that going into this weekend? Well, I think pre pre pressure is a pri privilege, you know. Uh, you're put in a position that's, uh, you know, a situation that has pressure. Uh, you know, I I like that feeling. I like having our backs against the wall. Uh, I like, you know, I didn't, you know, I, 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 hate, I hated our performance against Texas A&M offensively. You know, I had the worst day of coaching career offensively as an offensive coach, and it's a lot of pressure. And, you know, I, what we talked to our kids about offensively is how are we going to respond to that pressure? You know, are we going to respond? Are we going to fold up, as my dad used to say, are we going to fold up like a cheap tent? Uh, same thing here, you know, how are we going to respond to the pressure that we have, you know, that to play three more games? Uh, you embrace that pressure, uh, you know, by going out and preparing and having fun. You know, uh, Connor Shaw, you have to ask him the direct quote when you talk to him, but we do it like a little Devo motivational in the quarterback room. And I had to step out and when he was right when he was starting it because I forgot to do my COVID test this morning. So I had to run downstairs and do my – and it was about – you know, enthusiasm and having fun and how it affects pressure. So you might need to ask him about that, but it's basically, you know, you go out, you prepare, and you go out and we're playing a game. If you prepare the right way, then you go out and you have fun, that, that, that eliminates the pressure. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, what we're, we're, you know, that takes care of the pressure when you're prepared. Chandler Mack. 
Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this today. Just kind of going back to uh, you said earlier um, that you guys needed to play better around Colin Hill. The receivers needed to play better. Um, well, Kevin You just Harris said receivers. Time. I didn't say receivers. You said receivers, but. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, 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 yeah my bad. Uh, just the guys around Colin Hill need to play better. Uh, well, Kevin Harris had a really good game against Ole Miss. Shai Smith had a really good game. Two-part question. Talk to me about who are some of the other guys who you feel kind of need to step up to play better around Colin Hill? And then two, going into the game against Mizzou, can we expect a two or three quarterback system with Hill, Doty, and possibly Ryan Halinski playing? Uh, I'm not going to get in our plan uh, for the for the game plan offensive of, of the, you know, the quarterback position, whether we're going to use more than one. Uh, you know, as far as as far as stepping up, that's that's all. All it's, it's protection. It's all ten guys around him doing their job. Uh, it's making a play uh, that's not perfect. Uh, that's some things that we struggle to do. If if things aren't perfect, we don't we don't make the play. Uh, you know, we got to get tight ends more involved, and that was not necessarily their fault last week. It was a little bit of mine. I didn't get them involved as normally as I much as I have in the past. And then we've got to get help at the outside receiver. Uh, you know, Xavier Leggett, uh, you know, God bless him, has been banged up all year. Uh, he missed last game again. He didn't practice today. Uh, you know, we have not – I don't know what the number is, but, but, but outside receivers catching balls is very, very minimum. When your offense is center, centered around a run game and a slot receiver, uh, it makes it difficult for anybody. Uh, so, you know, outside receiver presence and ability to make plays on the outside uh, has been, you know, a, a thorn on our side offensively. Uh, we got to keep giving them opportunities. Uh, and I need to give them more opportunities uh, as a play caller uh, to make some, make some plays and have opportunities to make con contested catches. But, you know, we got to get help outside. When you're tight in your slot, are your threats and your tailback, uh, I mean, that – it helps the defense in a lot of ways. Ben Brenner. Uh, to Mike, two part question. First of all, you you mentioned that uh, RPO that Colin should have handed off. What what exactly were the the mechanics and what went wrong on that one? And also, what did you kind of learn about Ryan and about Colin as they went through that kind of reopened quarterback thing uh, last week? Uh. Yeah, I, I'm not, you know, get the, the RPO, it was press coverage and we should have handed it off first press. You know, it's just a, it's a mistake that we made. And, you know, when in a game like that, you know, that's back and forth, I think it was 45, 42 at the time. Uh, and we need to answer. It's just, you know, it was magnified and uh, those things happen, but made a lot of nice plays to get us to that point. Uh, just that that one play, you know, was magnified and we, and we didn't answer. Because in the, the end of the day, offensively, your job is to score more points than them. You know, and nobody pat nobody on the back. You know, we didn't do our job. Uh, we need to score more points than them. Uh, as far as uh, co competing and opening up uh, the competition last week, it was a challenge made to them that, you know, and, and this is exactly what Coach said to them, that we got to play better around the quarterback, but we got to play better quarterback. We're going to open it up, and all three guys could play. And Colin, you know, answered that challenge, he, and he played very well uh, in the game, and there was not a need for us to, to play anybody else in that in in the game uh and i'm gonna say this okay uh the best guy at every position is gonna play in a game period that gives us the best chance to win uh you know uh, i've been coaching for a long time and i've been coaching quarterbacks for a long time uh i'm not an expert or, or a guru but I, I i i know what it takes to win at that position and get things done david Hey, Mike, a couple for you. Uh, one, have you guys heard any, you know, indication that Missouri might still be reeling from their COVID test last week or go for Saturday night? No, I had uh, Co Coach George Wynn check, uh, you know, after the Sunday test and feels feels like, you know, I think we're, we're, we're good to go. But we tested again this morning. Uh, our results aren't back. They test on – I think they test on Tuesday. So those things could change, uh, you know, at, at, any, at any moment right now. Uh, my conversations with, with uh, Ray Tanner and Coach Wynn leading up to through yesterday was, you know, we're, we're, we're good to go. But that thing, those things could change today. And also, uh, Aaron Sterling and Brad Johnson missed the Ole Miss game. Will they be back this week? No, they are, they are out and injured. They're out for the year. 
Cam Gaskins. Uh, hey, Coach, yesterday you mentioned just kind of how your preparation changes, having to assume the, the roles of head coach while also worrying about the offense. I'm just curious on game day how your role looks different on the sidelines, uh, having to you know worry about the offense while also doing everything else a head coach has to do during a game. Uh, well, I, you know, that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, one of the appointments for the 10th coach was Connor Shaw uh, to have communication with the quarterbacks, you know, and relay some things that might be drawn up. Uh, talked about, you know, whether he's in the box or on the sideline sitting next to him. I haven't decided that where, you know, I can't walk over there. And, and you know, sometimes I've done that, you know, being a head coach and calling plays at Colorado State, you know, have to go over there and, and sh show some guys some stuff that you want to make sure you get it exactly right. Uh, but Connor would be, you know, kind of communicate with them between series. I'll be listening and talking, but, you know, got to be, you know, locked into what's going on defensively and, and game management. So that that will be a that will be a change. Where you normally in a game, you know, I, I don't I don't hardly see any of the defensive because I'm either drawing something or, you know, talking to a player. Uh, so you don't see much of what's going on defensively. Kyle Thomas. Coach, with players who are injured on the defense and offense and now four players who are opting out for the rest of the season, what's that conversation like with the next man up who steps up and has to take over for that position? Well, uh, you basically said it. Uh, it's the next man up. You know, it's, it's the, you know, the opportunity uh, that you've been working for in practice, you know, and you tell these kids all the time, it doesn't matter if you, you know, hey, when season starts, whether you're on scout team, whether you're third team or your second team, you've got to continue to work uh, to improve because, you know, if you're not, when your opportunity comes, you're not going to be ready. Your opportunity is not when somebody goes down and they put you in. Your opportunity is every day uh, to improve as a football player, to improve uh, doing your job, to help your side of the ball, uh, whether it's a role on special teams, whether it's playing scout team. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's the message. You know, if you're not ready, you know, this week because somebody went down, then you, you've wasted the last, you know, six months or uh, five months, however long we've been practicing and playing, it seems like forever, uh, and you're going to let your team down. Uh, you know, so we got to figure out uh, through these practices, you know, who's ready for that moment, who can go out there and, you know, be productive and put ourselves in position uh, to be productive, to move the ball offensively or, you know, to do their job defensively where it won't hurt the, hurt the defense or hurt the team. Colin Taylor. Yeah, Mike, I guess talking to T Rob, who who's gonna start at those two cornerback positions um with JC and Izzy obviously opting out and how confident and is he in y'all's conversations that some of the struggles defensively can be turned We're out? still we're still in the process of uh of figuring, you know, that out. Uh obviously uh Cam and uh John Dixon uh, have played a lot of corner. They've been playing a lot of corner. You know, Cam had the injury with his heel, but they've been playing a lot of corner all year. Uh, you know, Izzy has played a little bit of safety and JC playing nickel. Uh, so they've got reps uh, at corner. Uh, you know, right now I would say it would be, you know, those two, but you guys got guys like Joey Hunter who's repping and, and, and Rush uh, who's repping. And, it's you know, they're competing out there, you know, for playing. We're looking for guys that are going out there and going to play their tails off for each other uh, right now, and they, they can function and do a job. Phil Cornblit. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, all right. I know you like uh, video, Coach. I'm trying to get that. Don't mean to scare you there. So, uh, uh, you had two of your leaders, uh, well, four guys opt out, but two in particular, the two leaders on defense. So, Shai Smith has been a, a leader for you, I guess, for the overall team and on offense as well, in particular. What have your conversations been like with him, considering he's – having a great year and is looking to the draft as well. Did you have to talk with him to convince him to stay? Did that ever come up? Or has he been 100% all in with you since this happened? I, I tell you what, I've, I've been proud of, you know, Shy Smith. You hear you hear a lot of things when you, when you, when you take over a place and, you know, what guy's been. And, and we've challenged Shy since day one. And he's responded. Uh, is he perfect? No, nobody's. None of us are sitting here, me talking or none of these players. Uh, but I've been proud of how he's competed. I've been proud of uh, the way he's been a good team guy when the ball's not coming to him. Uh, and, you know, funny you asked that question on the plane ride home. Uh, he Nobody was in the seat next to him. Uh, we've kind of, He was on the plane early, and I just went over there, 
you know, and, and, and talk to him about, you know, how proud I was of him, how he's worked and how he's what he got to continue to do, you know, to improve him, to improve himself, uh, not only for this team, uh, and, but for, you know, for down the road. And, and, you know, kind of the message to Shaf since we got here uh, and has been, it's not about you, it's about the team. And if it's about the team, your play, your play, all right, will improve greatly. If it's just about you, your play's gonna suffer and the team's play's gonna suffer. Uh, and that was the message to the team this morning. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about Coach T-Rob, it's not about Coach Wolf, it's about us. Uh, and so that's the message. You know, I want guys that it's about us uh, to take the field with. And then, you know, if we do that, we work hard and, and they, they lay it on the line, then, you know, you put your head down at night, go to sleep and have some peace about, you know, you prepared them, and you got the guys out there fought their tails off. Mitch Brown. Coach, obviously it's not under the circumstances you wanted, but how timely is it to have someone like Connor Shaw be on the field and uh, someone that can relate has been working with the players directly in a different uh, aspect this season? Well, I, I, I like it. Uh, you know, one, he's been here since Coach hired him, since Marcus uh, uh, left uh, to pursue other things. Uh, and he's done a great job building a rapport uh, with the guys. You know, he's always around those guys. Obviously, he spent more time uh, around around me and the quarterbacks because that's the position he plays, naturally drawn to that. But just, just I think the guys respect him because of the, who he's been since he's been here. Uh, obviously, they see his pitcher in the indoor. They know he's the all-time leading quarterback in, in South Carolina history. But I think the respect for him is it goes how he treats everybody on a daily basis. And it's about them and not him. Uh, so I think that, that, that level of respect uh, he earned since he's been here. Uh, the other part I like is that he's an alumni here. Uh, he's an alumni here uh, in, in, in this program. Uh, he's got pride in, in South Carolina, so his pride, you know, is going to show through. Uh, now it'll probably show through through the offense because you know, that's who will be around this week. But uh, I think it's always good when you've got you know guys that play here and take have more pride, you know, in in what's going on. John Whittle. Yeah, with with uh, Zaquandre, excuse me. Uh, it seems like he's always had a lot of energy and enthusiasm. What does it say to you? about him as a player and a person to be willing to not only have that positive attitude when he's third string running back coming in to compete for the job, but also go and, and move over to safety, switch sides of the ball on, on the drop of a dime like that. I love it. I told him yesterday when I met with him, I love, I love that kid because he's got heart. Uh, obviously, he wants to be the starting running back. Obviously, he wants to get a chance to get in the game and carry the ball. Uh, but that doesn't affect how he practices. You guys can't see practice. This guy's the best practice player we have. Uh, it doesn't affect his enthusiasm on the sideline. It doesn't affect how he, you know, covers covers kickoffs or covers punts. Uh, he wants to be there. Don't get me wrong. He wants to be that. But but. He he said, you know, I just I want to do those things on special teams and, you know, try to you know to to. Uh, you know, build the confidence up that, that Coach Kitchen to having me and you to having me to put me in the game at running back. I know I lost some confidence with, a, you know, a fumble, and I'm trying to earn that back. And, you know, I want to be a running back, but if, you know, that's what we need, I'll do it. You know, I'll do it. And I said, that's why I came to you. I want to get you on the field and have an opportunity to play. And now we got to see how these, you know, these two guys go. If, if he's, if he's going to go over there and we don't feel like it's a chance for him to play, uh, then you know he's gonna he's gonna come back because the worst thing you do is ask a guy to move, uh, and then the opportunity doesn't present itself on that side of the field. So, but the main thing goes back to being honest and transparent with him, with what we think of him as a coach at that position. But as far as heart uh, and loving the game, uh, he's the kind of guy you want on your team. Ben Brenner. Uh Mike, uh, two questions. First of all, with, with kind of all this changeover, how much extra responsibility is Joe Cox taking on? And then also you mentioned kind of the lack of uh, outside receiver production. With sort of that reality, have you been able to run the full offensive scheme that you kind of wanted to, or has, is that factor limited it at all? Uh, as far as Joe Cox, he's taken over uh, a, a huge role. He's in there with the offense right now. Uh, you know, going over, you know, some of the practice clips and, and some formation stuff. Uh, we still have some situations to get done and, you know, work on third down and red zone. That's part of what we do uh, today. Uh, you know, Joe's, you know, Joe's been with me, obviously played for me. 
Uh, but, you know, out at Colorado State as a graduate assistant and as an assistant coach, and he's seen, you know, this offense evolve from what it was when he played to where it is now and, you know, everything in between. So the adjustments that I would make for certain things, he, he knows those and knows the answers. So uh, really, really glad that uh, I have Joe here. And then the other offensive staff guys are, are, have, been, have been all in. They've been great. Uh, we've asked them to do some different things that they haven't done before. Uh, you know, just take last week. The run game we did last week was totally different than, you know, probably a run game that, that Coach Wolf is used to. And we bought in, got the kid. And one thing for me to say it, but the position coach has got to get the kids to believe. And those kids believed and they played the way you want them to play. Uh, they believed that we were going to have success running because they believed in the plan because, you know, Coach Wolf believed in the plan. Uh, and that's, 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 that's part of everything. Uh, what was the other question? I'm sorry. Uh, just with kind of you mentioned sort of the limited production on the outside. Oh uh, yeah. Does that look really schematically? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a, well it's a lot different. Uh, uh, I mean, you just look at the production. Uh, you know, over the years, you you, you usually have a, an, an X receiver, boundary receiver that's close to eighty to hundred catches uh, in in this offense. Now we're a different you know because of ten game season and all that, but the you know the production has went went elsewhere. Uh, and then, you know, it's lacking some production because we're not getting, you know, most of the production is tailback, uh, tailbacks, uh, uh, slot receiver, and a little bit of tight end. And, you know, and that's, and that's partly on me, uh, Ben. And I told those guys, I said, you know, in, after the A&M game, I, t I told them, I said, it's about, you know, it's about building, it's about trust, you know, all right? You trust in what we're doing and believing in that and me trusting you, it goes both ways. I can't ask you to trust me if I don't trust you and give you an opportunity. Uh, so, you know, we gave more opportunities Saturday. We're going to continue to give more opportunities, uh, but we got to make we got to make some of those plays uh, in those opportunities. People used to call them 50-50 balls, but they're not 50-50 balls anymore. They're like 70-30 is what teams catch when they throw it outside versus contested. You know, because of ball placement and back shoulder, and then you know if guys get handsy, you get interference calls. So it's not really such thing as a a 50-50 ball, uh, we're probably at, I, I mean, I don't know what our percentage is. It's not very good. Uh, I wish we were 50-50. All right, we're going to try to get through these last few questions, uh, so no more uh, hands at this point. We'll try to get through the ones we have. Mike Uba. Uh, Mike, more of a lighthearted question that we yeah, will enjoy talking about at this time of the year. Uh, I know your son, like Will, uh, is getting ready for a state championship this week. And, you know, this has been obviously a, a different year for Drew in terms of moving across country and being able to play for a former USC quarterback like Eric Emery. Uh, what has that experience been like watching that as a father? And uh, what do you think uh, come uh, state championship night? Yeah, I'm excited for him. Uh, I think it's been a, a good change for him, uh, you know, to, to, to be here in the South, uh, to work for – or not work, to play for Coach Kimry. Uh, and Coach Barnes, you know, two guys that played here in South Carolina, but played the game and know the game. And, uh, you know, he, I've seen so much improvement for him. And you usually see improvement from guys when they go to the 10th and 11th grade years. But just fundamentally, he's having fun. Uh, and that's, you know, you want your kids to have a good experience. You know, you know my, my thing is I always – I don't ask any football questions of, you know, scheme they're running. I just want to see his ass play hard. You know, you better play hard. Uh, you better play for your team, and, and, and you know, it's not about you. That's all I ever – you know, I, I watch it every time we're on the road. After I finish our meetings, I'll go up, and I'm watching it, and it's, you know, you, are you playing hard? Because if you're playing hard and you're playing for the team and doing your job, you're going to have fun. And that's great. They made the state championship. I know he's excited. Uh, you know, he's, he's come close to a lot of guys over there, especially uh, Coach Muschamp's son, even though he's a little bit younger. Uh, so I think it's good that, you know, those two are even together. Now they're both going through, you know, a difficult time uh, right now. Because it's hard on kids. It's hard It's hard on families, uh, you know, when, you know, they don't know where they're – those kids don't know where they're going to go to school next year. Uh, and that's a, that's a tough thing. But that's the nature of this business. Uh, it's the nature of this profession. Uh, you know, at the same time, there's a lot of great things that come out of this profession that your kids get to be around too. Chandler Mack. Hey, Coach, talk to me, talk to us a little bit about um, Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris had an all-time performance against Ole Miss on Saturday night, and it seems like that's obviously has been forgotten over these past couple of days. So talk to me what his morale is like right now and just um, 
yeah, what has been the conversations that you've had with him? This I, week? I haven't, I haven't personally sat down with Kevin uh, and talked to him this week. But I, you know, talking to Coach Kitchens and talking to Coach Wolford, you know, the morale's high. Uh, you know, the offensive line and the tight ends and Adam Prentice, you know, they're excited that they've got a guy that's, uh, you know, getting close to a thousand yards. I think he's up there in the conference uh, in rushing yards, and, and that's a badge of honor for all of us. Uh, you know, you know those that line of scrimmage and that fullback and tight ends. And Kevin is, you know, he's excited about it. And you could see him getting stronger and stronger as the year goes on. Uh, just been really, you know, proud of him. He's been he's been patient in his runs. We worked really hard on those runs that we worked last week. They were a little bit different scheme, and a little bit different tracks. And uh, early in the week, we weren't hitting them, but, but coach did a great job of, of coaching them up on the looks they were getting, the tracks they were gonna, that were gonna happen and how we we're gonna block it. That's, you know, it's one thing to just hand the ball off and run, but if you know how we're trying to block things and why we're checking it, you've got a chance to do what we did the other night and divide runs. And the thing about Kevin, if you get him in the open space, he's shown, not just in one guy game, time and time again, you know, to take it to the house. Uh, and you, you you can't say enough about that, you know. Then a lot of times over the years we block for, you know, block for 10, you know, I got 14 or block for 20 and we got 25 or we don't we don't get that home run. I mean, this guy is is, is taking, the, taking the ball uh, to the house. And, uh, you know, and that's a credit to him. And that's a credit to, uh, you know, th that O-line, Coach Wolf, uh, those kids, that's a credit to Coach Bentley and those tight ends. That's a credit to Coach Kitchen, fullback. I mean, receivers blocking downfield, running back in, quarterback getting us in the right play. I mean, I, th I think uh, we looked it up the other day. It's like 67% of his yards are yards before contact. Uh, and that's doing a good job at the point of attack. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a huge number of yards before contact yards. Kyle Thomas. Over the past few weeks, Coach, have you noticed the morale and energy and enthusiasm of the team kind of shift with every all these changes going on? Well, I mean, I, I think I said it. I don't know if I said it to you guys, but when you lose, it's bad for team morale. You know, it, it is. You know, when it's good for team morale. I mean, we haven't played well uh, and we've lost. And, morale, you know, it's, it's human nature. You get down, you know. But, you know, kids are resilient. You know, kids are resilient and they're going to bounce back. And, you know, it's been a tough uh, two weeks. It's been a tough two days uh, for these kids, you know. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to bounce back. They're going to respond. You know, we're going to rally the troops. And those guys have got to rally each other and go out and play well. Because nobody's going to feel sorry for us, okay. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you in life when things don't go your way either. It's how you respond to those challenges. And that's, you know, that's, 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 uh, that's my message. You know, I want guys that want to respond and want to fight. Uh, and, and and try to finish this thing off the right way. Colin Taylor. Yeah, Mike. Just now that you're interim head coach, do you change any way you guys practice? Do you guys do anything from a logistical standpoint, and kind of how do you plan on handling Sundays after games? I ain't got that far yet, but uh, this week, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, you know, Monday was our off day, uh, but Tuesday and Wednesday are work days. Uh, today was more first, second down. Tomorrow be more situational stuff, you know, red zone, third down, uh, stuff, stuff that we got to work uh, in for situations. Uh, obviously, special teams in both days. Thursday will be a total walkthrough. Uh, we will not go on the field on Thursday. We won't be in helmets. We'll be a total walk through. Uh, I, you know, it, I feel like we're a little bit, a little bit banged up. Obviously, we're banged up. We're short guys with guys opting out. Uh, so we're going to walk through on Thursday, and then we're going to come back Friday and do what I'm going to call a fast, fast Friday. Walk through. Walk, Thursday's a no sweat Thursday. We won't sweat. Friday will be a fast Friday on the field. Uh, we'll hit offense, defense, and run through all the special teams uh, at game speed. Uh, we won't be on the field long, but it'll be fast game speed uh, type stuff. And then Saturday, uh, I think we're going to come over here and actually walk through over here and allow the kids to get in the cold tubs, hot tubs, uh, since it's a long day at the hotel. There's nothing more miserable than sitting at the hotel uh, all day. So that'll be a little bit different. Whether we go on Sunday or not, I haven't decided. Last question goes to Phil Cornblue. Yeah, Mike, three quick things. The guys who opted out, will they be welcomed uh, on the sidelines for uh, the last two home games? Uh, secondly, um, what have you guys heard back from your committed players at this point? Anybody telling you they're, they're not sticking? 
And, and thirdly, you do have two home games left. What what do you hope to see from the fans that will turn out for these last two home games? Okay. Uh, number one, uh, when you opt out, uh, it's it's the rule. The university rule is that you're no longer part of the program uh, because you're, you're you know we have strict protocols and strict guidelines for COVID. Uh, so when you opt out. You know, you're still going to school. You're doing, but you're you're on your own. You're not around. You're not around the guys. You know, they check in with Coach Wynn and their academic people, but they're not in the building and will not be on the sideline. Uh, second one was uh, uh, the third. What was the second one? I can't hear. I'm deaf. Recruits, okay. All right, uh, the recruits, uh, yeah, we've been communicating to guys. Uh, I've talked to a couple guys. I've uh, been texting a lot of guys. That's the way these guys communicate now. Uh, and, and like I said, when yes, I think it was yesterday I talked to you guys. It's about being honest and transparent where we're at, uh, that coaches, you know, having a coaching search, uh, you know, encourage the guys, you know, to be patient and see what's, ha see what's happening and encourage the guys that, that this is a great place. Uh, and you chose this place for a number of reasons. Obviously, Coach Muschamp was one of them. But just you know, being honest and saying the opportunities there, and you know, Coach, we're going we're going to honor your scholarship. And if you want to sign on the 16th, you know, we're going to take your we're going to take your uh, take your NLI. Uh, last thing is, uh, you know, what I want to see from the fans. I, I don't. I'm not. I mean, I want to see from our team uh, go out and play hard and play together. Uh, I mean. That's what I want to see, you know. Uh, Mark Reed used to say his mom doesn't know football, but she knows if we're playing hard. Uh, so, I, you know, I want Mark Rick's mom, if she's watching, to say, boy, that team played hard. Uh, you know, fans are, you know, fans. And you know, I'm going to say this about fans, okay. Uh, uh, this is passion place, okay, here in South Carolina, passion in the SEC. That's what it makes the SEC what it is, uh, and there's no there's no running from it. You're never going to please any, everybody. Your job is to do the best job you could do and try to put the product on the field to win games. Uh, the passion of, of SEC football is, is what makes SEC football great. All right. All right. Thank you. That's Coach. it. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.